वेलकम बैक गाइज दिस इज द बोनस क्लास ऑफ दिस कोर्स एंड इन दिस कोर्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टॉप फिफ्टीन पाथॉन इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन सो पाथॉन इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन फॉर फ्रेशर्स ओके सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम लेट स्टार्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर वन वट इज़ द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द शेलो कापी एंड अ डीप कापी सो यू मस्ट हैव सम नॉलेज अबाउट वट इज शेलो कापी एंड वट इज़ डीप कापी एंड दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ डीप कापी एंड दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ शेलो कापी एंड दीज आर द मैथड दैट वी यूज टू क्रिएट द शेलो कापी एंड द डीप कापी इन पाथॉन लैंग्वेज सो द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन द शेलो एंड द डीप कापी इज दैट द चेंजेज इन ऑरिजिनल ऑब्जेक्ट आर नॉट रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द कापी ऑफ डीप कापी and the changes in the original object are reflected in the copy so this is the difference between the shallow and the deep copy let's move on how is multi threading achieved in python so this is the question about mostly asked questions in interview so multi threading usually implies the multiple threads are executed concurrently but so python global interpreter lock doesn't allow more than one thread to hold the python interpreter so for that we use the context switching and it is also quite different from multi processing so let's move on to the question number 3 discuss the django architecture so django is a web service used to build your web pages and its architecture is shown as like it has a template the front end of the web page then it has a model the back end where the data is stored then it has a view it interacts the model and template and map it to a url so actually view is working for mapping the url and then django that serves the page to the user so this is the basic architecture of django let's move on and this is a question number 4 what advantages does the numpy array have have over a nested list so for that first of all you must know that what is numpy array and the list NumPy is written in C so that all its complexities are blocked. So NumPy, okay. So NumPy is written in C language and all its complexities are packed into a simple to use module. Okay. So on the other hand, lists are dynamically typed. We have multiple data types in a single list, and therefore Python must check the data type of each element every time it uses it. So that's why NumPy array is much faster than the lists. Okay the next point is numpy has a lot of additional functionalities that list doesn't offer so for instant a lot of things can be automated in numpy so that's why numpy has some advantages over the lists let's move on to the question number 5 what what is the concept of pickling and unpickling so converting what is pickling converting a python object hierarchy into byte stream is called pickling so you are actually converting a python object into a byte stream which is pickling and what is unpickling it's vice versa converting a byte stream to a python object hierarchy is called unpickling and pickling is also ref referred to as serialization and unpickling is referred to as deserialization so this is the example if you have just created a neural network model and you can save that model to your hard drive pickle it and then unpickle to bring it back to an other software program or to use it for the later time so this is the basic use of the pickling and unpickling and this is the difference let's move on to the question number 6 how is memory managed in python so this is a very important question for the interviews python has a private heap space that stores all the object so so python language is a private space the python memory manager regulates the various aspects of this heap and such as sharing caching segmentation and allocation and the user has no control over the heap so only python interpreter has the access so interpreter is actually managing the memory in python so let's move to the question number 7 are arguments in python passed by value or by reference so arguments are passed in python by reference and this means that any changes made within the function are reflected in the original object so anything which is passed by reference has some effect on the original object after changing so moving to the question number 8 what does this operator do in python this division operator performs division and returns the quotient in the float so for example like 5 divided by 2 returns 2.5 on the other hand this uh operator this is also called as the division operator on the other hand returns the quotient in integer so if we want to 
uh, if we want our quotient in integer then we have to use this operator if we want our quotient in floating point then we have to use this single operator so for example if we divide 5 by 2 then it returns 2 so it will give a uh, an absolute integer now move on to the question number nine that how will you check if all the characters in a string are alphanumeric right so the answer is like python has an inbuilt method which is is all num is all num which returns true if all the characters in the strings are alphanumeric so you have to use this built-in function which is is all num so this is an alphanumeric a b c d and one two three so dot is all num so this is the method that we can check whether the string is alphanumeric or not so this is true but in this case is not alphanumeric it also because it also because it also contains these special characters with them so that's why it is giving us false right another way to use this regs as shown is another way to use this uh, like import re and we have to use this bool operator and then we can use this method match method and to check whether the string is alphanumeric or not right so let's move on to the question number 10 is python object oriented or functional programming so note that this is very important question in python language even in interviews also so python is considered as a multi-paradigm language python follows the object oriented paradigm and it also follows the functional programming paradigm but how python allows the creation of objects and their manipulation through a specific methods and it supports most of the features of OOP such as inheritance and polymorphism, right? But in case of the functional programming paradigm, functions may be used as the first class object and Python supports lambda function which are characteristic of functional paradigm. We have used the lambda function in our project, so let's move on. In Python, uh, okay, this is the question number 11. In Python, functions are first class object. What do you infer from this? It means that a function can be treated just like an object. You can assign them to a variable or pass them as an argument to another function as we have discussed while we were discussing the functions in detail. And you can even return them from the other functions. So that's why we call them the first class objects. Now move on to the question number 12. What is the purpose of pass statement? Pass statement is used when there is a syntactic but not an operational requirement. In this example, as you can see here, when when I have used this if statement, if i is equal equals to empty string, and then I have not mentioned any expression over here. So I simply type here pass. By typing pass, code editor will not give us error because it is acting as a null operation. So it actually acts as a placeholder or a null operation or no action required sometime. So else print i comma end. Now move on to the question number 13. What is the difference between the matrix and the arrays? So array, an array is a sequence of objects of similar data type, right? Array do not contain the data of the different data type. And what about matrix? A matrix comes from a linear algebra and is two dimensional representation of data, right? So array is a single dimensional and it has two dimensional representation. An array within another array forms a matrix, right? So when we combine two array, then it forms a matrix. So it comes with a powerful set of mathematical operations that allows you to manipulate the data in interesting way. So matrix is bit complex and arrays are a little bit easy to deal. Let's move on to the question number 14. What is the doc string in Python? So this is basically a doc string. The string which is mentioned in the three double quotations is called as a doc string this is function this function adds two numbers so i have created a function def add a comma b so this is a doc string and sum is equals to a plus b return sum sum add 10 comma 20 so now print assessing doc string method add dot doc so this is the method like we can use the doc string in our output sorry i mentioned here 17 but it is actually 15. so how do you display the contents of a text file in reverse order 
So how we can actually display the content of a text file in reverse order? So the answer is you can display the content of text file in reverse order using the following step. Step number one, open the file using the open function using file handling, right? Number two, store the content of the file into a list. Step number three, reverse the content of the list by using the reverse function. And step number four, run a for loop to iterate through the list. And even there is an uh, step number five, and then you can use the print method to print the whole data or whole content on the in the output. So these were the 15 top most asked questions in Python language interview in Python language interviews. So I hope you like this video and I have also mentioned the answers. So that's it for today. See you in the next lecture.